Hi everyone, welcome to devlog number 25. Today I'm going to be showing you how to add a decal with shrink wrap to a armature deformed mesh in the Upblender game engine. This is what I'm using for my game project and I thought I would share the methodology for the solution because uh, some of the people on my discord had asked the question. But first, thank you to my patrons. Without all of you, this would not be happening and the justification for an Uplander game engine game is I feel very important and I think that there needs to be vertical integration, unified workflow, if you will, between um, 3D design suites and game engines. And so that's why my chosen engine is the Uplander game engine and all these wonderful people who are my patrons are supporting the project. Again, thank you all so very much. And thanks to the magic of video editing, all the names are now gone. Okay, so let's jump right in and I'm gonna show you how a decal is made first in the Blender game engine or the Upblender game engine. So let's go transition to my screen here and you can see usually what happens is a ray will shoot from one point to a mesh and then give you the name of the object, that's the hit object, then the normal which is the orientation of the object and then the position which is the position in world space or world position of that object. So this is a visual representation of what you would do if you had a decal kind of snapping to an object. And you can see um, the mesh of the, mo the monster is very wild and kind of deformed and has all sorts of different structures and um, shapes. So let's, let's first of all, let, let's correct her, the shader right now. She has, um, oh, that's, that's just this, um, her collision boxes. So these collision boxes are what I use to detect collision of the bullet. So I'm going to turn those off for a moment and we can say, take a look at just the vampire. So a ray will shoot from the gun in the game engine and connect with the body. At that point, it'll get the position, it'll add this bullet decal object, and then it'll correct the orientation so it aligns with the face. At that point, it then needs to iterate through the armature bones that are deforming our little vampire who's doing a little creep action right here, and it'll track to the body. But there's a problem. You may already see it. This looks like a kind of plane that's floating above her skin, and it doesn't always faithfully sort of recreate this this bullet effect because you can see it looks like it's just kind of tacked on there. So I'm going for quality here and I'm trying to make it look very good and also I need the system to be modular. That means that I can't just customize a mesh to receive bullet wounds. I need to make some sort of system that allows me to make bullet wounds happen to anything because in the shadows lengthen I intend to keep adding monsters. So I need to make a system where the, the game engine does the work for me. And this is something that a lot of people in game dev should probably do is allow the software and the allow the engine and the software to do the work for you rather than you having to custom, I don't know, animate a hit bullet point on every part of the mesh of a monster. That's a lot of work and it'll slow you down. And if you're an independent game dev, you will get bogged down and you won't be able to, you know, move forward. You'll keep on making custom stuff for one specific aspect of the game and you won't be able to move forward. So this is how I am enabling myself to move forward. I created a shrink wrap system so that this decal will shrink wrap to the mesh of the monster. And I did that by having collision boxes for different body parts. And the, the collision uh, boxes um, will determine certain weaknesses. For example, if the vampire is you know, allergic to silver if you shoot it in the heart. I don't think that's true, but if that were the case, then if you shot her in the chest area at a collision box on her chest, which is currently now just this, this shape, then that would create a different state for the monster and create some sort of damage scenario. But the bullet visually needs to appear as though it's wrapping to the body. And right now, it, you can see it just kind of hovers above the surface. So I need to make a shrink wrap system. And a lot of people that are familiar with Blender or designing in Blender will be familiar with shrink wrap. Shrink wrap is a modifier that comes in Blender and it's wonderful. You simply create your object and then you go to the modifiers tab over here. You use shrink wrap. You can select your object and you could subdivide multiple times like so. And now if I pick my um, object here, this is I think plane. Yep. Okay. And I turn on the visibility. You'll see 
okay, the, the mesh is now shrink-wrapped to the, uh, the mesh below. So this mesh here is a little example of what I would call a deformed mesh that needs to accommodate the bullet decal. And unfortunately, the game engine does not allow the modifiers to update in an efficient way. So when you actually run the game engine here, you'll see this, um, this mesh here is just solid. So it's not actually updating with the, the mesh beneath it. So it's going to create a visual kind of blur and it won't look good. So you can't use shrink wrap. So what I did instead was I developed a shader that allows a plane that is positioned above a mesh to adhere to what's below it. And I'm doing that by using Z depth transparency. And if you take a look at the shader, you can see how it works. So essentially inside my material for what I'm calling the gory hole, which is the bullet hole, we have the alpha value of this material which I'm calling mesh prox, mesh proximity. And if you look in the settings, the render settings for mesh proximity, you can see it's using depth transparency and the game settings are alpha blend. And that allows me to get the depth of the depth factor from that mesh to another mesh. So as this gets closer to say another mesh, it will actually influence the depth factor of the parallax that's affecting this bullet decal. So the bullet decal, it's simply this right here, which I'm calling pretty accurately hole. And hole, it's just a displacement map. If you look at the texture here, you can see it's a simple displacement map. By the way, this little line right here, that's to that's so that when when the bullet decal is applied, I can randomize the rotation of it. So every time the bullet the decal hits, there's a slight randomization to the bullet, so not every bullet is like a cookie cutter that always hits the same spot. So this is being applied by this parallax displacement right here, um, and actually I have this duplicate texture. And what happens after this is it's being mixed with a color, so I can make it modular. The bullet holes could be different colors. And then it is shrinking using the squeeze value here, and that's affecting the alpha. So the squeeze value is simply affected by this color value, which is the object data color. The object data is then animated. And if you look at the IPO curve editor here, the, the green value here is moving. So what this is doing here, right here, is as they go along the timeline, the, the, the squeeze value shrinks and the bullet hole shrinks. So it gives the impression to the viewer that the bullet is healing, sort of like, you know, you shoot the monster and the bullet heals. And thanks to this displacement of the mesh proximity, this mesh here will now automatically adhere to this complicated mesh beneath it. So if I press P, you can see now it looks like it appears as though it's shrink wrapping to the mesh beneath it. And it's using a very simple trick. It's just taking the parallax and it's using the bump scale. And the bump scale allows you to determine artificially the depth of something without actually altering the mesh, but altering the shader. So this is great, which means that if I ever have a monster with hair or different hair cards or different geometric shapes, these bullets will be able to adhere perfectly to that object. So here you can see if I just don't, if I use a static number, let's just say the bump scale is 0.5. That's the depth of the bullet wound here. And if I press P, you can see it's not updating to the shape of the geometry. That's a no-no. But when I apply this, now it is updating it has the depth to it, but also it's updating to the shape of the geometry as well. So this is perfect. Now if I go over to my hidden layer here, you'll see I'm going to have this decal right here. And I'm calling it Gory Hole 1M because it's a mesh. And then I have these three light sources, hole, uh, 1, 2, and 3. And these three light sources also affect the shader of the monster. If I go over here, you want to limit the number of lit light sources you have in the Uplander game engine. However, these light sources are not going to hurt much processing very much because they don't actually have any lighting. They're not using specular or diffuse. They're simply points. And these are really only being used to determine the proximity of another spawned object to the mesh of the vampire. So if you look at the vampire's mesh here, you can see she has in her shader, she has her skin here, she has the mesh proximity and the specularity being affected here. And then we have these three objects. 
each one of them referencing the light sources. So this will actually, when you shoot the monster, the, the bullet hole will be applied to the world position, it'll then be parented to the collision mesh, and the orientation will be corrected to adhere to the shape of the collision mesh, so it looks like it's sticking to her body. Then the shader will shrink wrap the bullet hole to her skin, and then as a last step, one of these light sources will be added to that location as well to provide damage, like blood splatter. So that as the bullet heals, the blood splatter remains. So this gives a kind of realistic permanent damage system where damage can be applied to the monster. So let's all see this happen in real time now, because it's interesting to kind of talk about this, but let's see it actually work. If you have the monster here, uh, I'm going to save her. She's actually being lib-loaded into the game, and now I'm going to load op open my test build here. So, cheers by the way, I am drinking coffee today. Okay, so the game is loading. Right now, uh, my patrons have access to the build, and the, the loading is slow. That's because it's a static build, meaning it's got all the bells and whistles, large textures, and a lot of working files in there that are not very light or lightweight or movable. If you press M in the, the static build, the test build, it'll actually, you can see below here, there's a lot of errors being reported, and it's loading in the cutscene to the intro of the game, and there's the player. So now we have the player, and we're going to go take a look at the vampire. Now, she's over here, I think. There she is. The scene is also very brightly lit right now for testing purposes. Now, she's going to start to walk towards me here. There she is. And I can shoot the pistol. And you can see it's adding the bullet hole to her. And it's, um, you can see below there's an error. Every time I miss her, it's saying there's no, nothing's being hit. But let's see if I can shoot her in the head here. There we go. I got her in the head. So now she, the bullet, the blood has been added to her face. Now she grabs me. You got me. So there, you can see she's killing you, and she had some battle damage to her face where it actually tears the tears away the skin from her, and then you see the under the underbelly of the stuff. So that's really cool. That's really fun. Let's do something really quick while the static build is loading, though. I'm gonna turn off her AI so we can see the bullet holes really up close here. We're gonna turn. We're gonna go to the behavior of the monster, which is right over here. Um, there it is. Oops. One more time, Thomas. Monster. There's the monster. We're going to turn off her update behavior here. And that wouldn't matter because now we're lib loading the, this is the loading screen for the vampire. We've loaded in the scripts for the vampire. And now the vampire will basically be in a pose, but she will be very vulnerable and she'll just stay perfectly frozen. So this is for testing purposes. Here she is. Now she's nice and frozen, so she can't fight, she can't fight back. But we can shoot her. So let's see what happens. Boom. Okay, so one thing I note is that the bullet hole is appearing to be merged with her skin right now. Let's go. Let's use her back for a moment. So you can see, actually, there's a few... Um, sometimes, if I hit the wrong alley, you see that it's actually still masked a little bit by the mesh. And that's okay. That's just because I haven't provided enough offset for the bullet wound. But you can see it's adding damage to her. Once I get to a maximum of three, it replaces the light source to a new object. Um, I can shoot her on the arm here because I added a collision mesh to her arm. And you can see the bullet healing shut as I shoot her like this. But you can also see that it's kind of being masked by the mesh, like right there, when I hit her at the wrong angle. So you can see the mesh hitting her. So let's, let's go to work fixing that. And thanks to the magic of the Blender Game Engine, I'm going to do a really quick fix here, and that will be the end of this devlog. But if I go over here and I take the mesh that I'm working with currently, and I just move up, let's say, uh, let's make it one full blender unit north of, uh, or vertical on the z-axis here. And we're gonna do selection to grid. There we are. So now the bullet, and also we could probably scale that down. Those, those bullet holes were pretty big. Um, there. Now we should have a, a nice passable little uh, bullet. So because it's higher up on the z-axis, when we finally do apply it to the monster here, it should update and um, there shouldn't, it shouldn't be eaten by those little pieces of mesh. Uh, or it, it shouldn't, you know, be inside the mesh so you won't... It's hard to articulate these things. 3D is like that, but when it hits her mesh, 
the plane will not be falling below the co the collision mesh or the visual mesh of the armature of the of the mon of the vampire. So there's other things we could do as well. Like we can have a rounded mesh, so it kind of coats with a cone these areas rather than being a flat plane, which is more likely to sort of be, um, you know, culled by the other mesh. We can use other techniques like we can have a concave mesh so the the tips of it will go up at the edges so it'll sort of flare and that way it won't get sucked in let's see what happens though so now if i shoot her in the back you can see up oh, well it's still happening there a little bit actually not really no it's, it's it's above there so um there you go this is the magic of it so obviously i would probably add something else so maybe um when the light source is near the dress rather than adding battle damage because you can see it adds blood to her here, but it, it, it's adding blood to this. So if, if I hit the dress, uh, I might update it to be um, nothing because it wouldn't do anything. But maybe the battle damage would actually mask part of her dress and make a rip or a tear or a hole in her dress. And then this way the dress will appear to also accumulate bullet damage. And um, here you can see that it, it's healing when I shoot her. Uh, so her whole body doesn't have collision mesh right now, so her arm is pretty much... Um, safe. Let me go full screen here, and uh, we can see we can shoot her in the back, and there we we have a collision mesh. Her lower abdomen here doesn't have anything, so it just goes right through her. If I shoot her in the face, though, she has a collision mesh there, so I can shoot her multiple times in the head, and she will get very bloody in the face here. I'm not sure if these th this might be a little too bloody on her face. One bullet hole really kind of fills her head up with blood, really, but. This is, this is the system that I have currently, and again, this is really important uh, for many game devs. If you're trying to create a system, her neck has a collision mesh as well here. It's, a, it's important to create a system that's modular, so sure it works for this vampire, but the next time I import a new monster into the game, so the werewolf and that has fur, or the banshee that simply doesn't, you know, take bullet damage, but might create like a little ghosty wind thing because you just shot through it or something like that, this is a modular system. Also, I take creative feedback. I am going to tell you personally, I think that these bullet holes are a little too bright red at the moment, and that's not really gory enough. And of course, when you fire here, there should be a little bit of a splash of blood too, so it should kind of create like a burst of ah, blood or something, you know, to, to, to kind of really round this out and make it look much more exciting. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching this devlog of how to make the little bullet holes work in the game. Um... Uh, again, thank you to all my patrons. Uh, a static build of the game is now available in the game updates on the Discord. And uh, there's lots of fun things you can play with. For instance, jumping in the vehicle and driving as far as you want in the open world. So it's very fun to test now. We can see how far we can go. Um, yeah, so I think I'll leave it here. The car has lots of bugs. There's a lot of physics bugs at the moment because there's a few issues with the collision mesh. But things are becoming much more stable and much more passable. Also, on a update on uh, an update for the the project itself, I have currently made a Steam account and a um, a storefront is now in the works, so that I will be able to create a wish list um, item listing for the uh, a Steam release of the game, so people will eventually be able to wish list it and get access to the uh, the, the the beta and um, they'll be able to drive through wonderful little scenes like this in an open world in the Uplander game engine and uh, tweak them and even look at them for themselves. Anyway, I'm going to end it here, and I'm going to jump out of the car doing uh, one of my patrons, the Greg roll. So let me jump out of the car here. Oh, 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 oh. So that's very fantastic. I'm very pleased with the fact that that exists in the game now. Anyway, uh, ending it here. What's that?